Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now, if you go back to kind of the humble beginnings of uh, Android, you'll find smartphones with quite small amounts of uh, RAM, quite small amounts of memory, maybe 512 megabytes, maybe one gigabyte. And then over the years, that kind of number has started to rise slowly. Two gigabytes, three gigabytes, four gigabytes in flagship devices really was quite popular for a couple of years. But now we've got to the point where memory is kind of going out of control. We had six gigabytes and eight gigabytes. And now people are talking about 10 gigabyte devices. Probably we're going to see 12 gigabyte devices. So how come we've gone from these humble beginnings right up to these very, very large amounts of memory? Is it just spec wars? Is one company just trying to beat another just on the specification sheet? or actually do you need that amount of memory? Well, I've done some experimentation, I've done some investigation, and I want to look at how much memory do you actually need in your Android smartphone. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the first thing to mention is I've just published a video over at the Gary Explains channel, which talks about the technical details of how Android deals with its RAM. What does it do when you try to launch an app and there's no space left in RAM for that app to actually occupy? Now I go into all the technical details over there, but the bottom line is, is that some other app will have to be kicked out of RAM to make room for the new app. And what that means is if you're scrolling through the recent app screen, if you tap on an app that's actually still in memory, it will just come up uh, instantaneously and carry on exactly where it left off. However, if you tap on an app that's actually been kicked out of RAM, then that app will load up from the beginning. You might see kind of the splash screen as it loads and it will try to resume exactly where it was. But maybe in some cases, like in a game, it won't be able to resume exactly where it was. It will maybe take you to the beginning of that level or something like that. So there is a disadvantage to having apps kind of kicked out of RAM because it does affect your user experience uh, ever so slightly. Having said that, there is a point where having so much RAM doesn't really change the user experience. I mean, it's kind of unreasonable to say, hey, I launched this app three months ago and I've never rebooted my phone. And when I tapped on it in the recent apps list, it reloaded it from the disk. That's outrageous. I wanted it to stay in memory for three months. Well, clearly that's not what we want either. So what we need to do is look at how much RAM do you actually need. To do that, we're gonna look at two things. First, we're gonna see how much RAM an actual app takes. And secondly, we're gonna see how much RAM is available on some of the popular Android devices. Okay, so let's start by looking at apps. Now, when you load an app from the internal storage and it come, comes up onto the screen, it takes up some RAM in your Android device. So a standard app in Android takes about 300 megabytes of RAM. So if you think about you know, Google Play itself or Spotify or Candy Crush, you know, YouTube, simple apps like this. Some of course take slightly less, some take slightly more. But I did a kind of an experiment looking at a lot of the popular apps and the average is about 300 megabytes. So that would mean that if you had, for example, a theoretical phone with, let's say one gigabyte of available memory, that could actually take three of those apps in memory simultaneously without any problem. In fact, once you include swapping, which I deal with in that video on the Gary Explain channel, that might be bumped up to, let's say, uh, four uh, apps simultaneously in memory. But there are, of course, other types of apps. For example, if you have a media intensive app, let's say something like Instagram or Gmail, things that are kind of loading up different, uh, you know, pieces of data, photographs, the Google Photos app, for example, these kind of apps can take a lot more space because every one of those photos, even though it's a thumbnail, needs to be stored in memory and you want it accessible quick as you're scrolling, you want all these pictures to appear. So those kind of apps can take maybe up to 500, maybe 600 megabytes of uh, RAM. So that would mean if you were kind of using Google Photos, then you might be able to also have Candy Crush and let's say Google Play and Spotify also all in memory at the same time, but that Google Photos app has taken up more of the available memory. And then after that, you've got some very heavy intensive apps. And these are mainly games. So if you look at games like, for example, Need for Speed uh, No Limits or PUBG or uh, Asphalt 9, then all of these uh, apps might take 800, 900, even a gigabyte 
of RAM. So if you go back to our theoretical one gigabyte of available memory, one game like uh, Need for Speed can take up all that memory in one go. And all those other apps you had, you know, Google Play and Twitter and all that, all get kicked out of memory to make room for that one app. It's also worth mentioning that Google Chrome falls into that kind of heavy usage category because as you're opening up different tabs, as you're loading up web pages which themselves have got images in them, actually the amount of space that Google Chrome can use with three or four open tabs can easily go over 900 megabytes towards one gigabyte. So in thinking about how much RAM you need, you need to think about what kind of apps you use. Do you run games like Fortnite and PUBG and uh, Need for Speed? If you do, then your RAM use is gonna be much higher than somebody who really just kind of uses Spotify and Twitter uh, and then occasionally reads some emails and goes into Instagram. They're very two different categories of users and the demands that you place on your smartphone are very different. So let's look at some popular Android devices and see how much installed RAM they have and how much available RAM they have, which can of course be used by apps. So I've got here a, a Huawei Mate 8 that I've had for a couple of years. It's a three gigabyte device and that has uh, 1.3 gigabytes of available memory and it's using 512 megabytes of ZRAM compression. Again, go and see that uh, Gary Explains video if you want to know what that means. Now a device like the Pixel 3 XL comes with four gigabytes. Of that 1.7 gigabytes is the available memory and it's using one gigabyte of ZRAM. And then a device like the Galaxy Note 8 and the Galaxy Note 9 both have six gigabytes of RAM. Now the Note 8 will have about 2.7 gigabytes of available memory and a 2.5 gigabyte uh, ZRAM space, whereas the Note 9 will have about 3.5 gigabytes of available memory and a two gigabyte ZRAM. And then of course we come to the OnePlus 6. Now OnePlus are one of the companies that have always been pushing high amounts of RAM. So it gives you eight gigabytes of RAM. The McLaren edition gives you 10 gigabytes of RAM. Now in the eight gigabyte version, then you get five gigabytes of available memory after a reboot and there is zero ZRAM use. So there's zero swapping available on the OnePlus 6T. And now that we have those numbers, it really is just a case of doing the maths plus a little bit of leeway because of the idea of swapping. So if you've got 1.7 gigabytes of available memory like you do on the Pixel 3 XL, well that means you can get five apps in memory simultaneously when the apps are around 300 megabytes of uh, occupancy each. If you then stick in a big game, for example, like a Need for Speed, well that's gonna take away a gigabyte, then the other 700 megabytes will, can be used by two or three apps uh, like you know Google Play and Spotify uh, and YouTube without you having to restart uh, any apps at all. But with four gigabytes of memory, even though you can happily switch between half a dozen apps or so, you can even put in a big game in there and still have enough memory to switch between a couple of apps, some users find that over time, because really they are using more than just two or three apps they might have, maybe six, seven, eight, 10, 12 apps that they use regularly, including you know the weather and the news and the email. And by the time you start running all those different things, then they're gonna find, they are gonna find app restarts happening quite frequently. Now, if you move over to some of the devices with six gigabytes of RAM, here we can see already that we're talking about 2.5 gigabytes or three gigabytes of available memory. And that would mean literally you could run like a big game like Need for Speed, still have two gigabytes of uh, memory available, which means you can kind of load and then all your apps like Spotify and Twitter and Gmail and Instagram, and you'll still have plenty of room in there. And on top of that, you've got the idea of the swapping using the SRAM. So really at this stage in 2019, six gigabytes is the start of the sweet point because here really you can switch between apps quite freely, even some very big apps, and you're not really gonna see an app restart very often. And then we get onto devices with eight gigabytes, for example, like the OnePlus 6T, and there you've got like five gigabytes of available memory. So the sweet spot here really does continue because you can run like, you know, Need for Speed and Fortnite and Instagram and Gmail and a whole bunch, 
you know, 10 or 12 other smaller apps all at the same time, and they can all stay in RAM, and you can switch between them seamlessly. However, this really is the upper end of the uh, sweet spot. And kind of, I would challenge people who use phones with six gigabytes and eight gigabytes to see if they really could see the difference inside this sweet spot. You know, is there really much of a user difference? From my testing and from my day-to-day -day usage, I have a six gigabyte uh, Note 8. I don't see much of a difference between six gigabytes and eight gigabytes, but they are both part of this nice sweet spot. However, once you go beyond eight gigabytes to 10 gigabytes and to 12 and who knows, 16 gigabytes, really now we are entering into the land of uh, Mr. Silly, who of course, if you've read any of the Mr. Men books, lives in nonsense land. And this really is a place where it really is quite stupid because you don't need to hold you know, Fortnite and PUBG and Need for Speed and, and then who else knows what other apps all in memory, all at the same time, so that an app you started you know, a month ago, when you switch to it in the recent apps, it's still there. So really, more than eight gigabytes, I think personally is really quite ridiculous. And actually, if you translate that through to, let's say the desktop and the laptop world, well, I have a laptop with eight gigabytes and I can run Premiere Pro and Photoshop and lots of other things on it and it works absolutely fine. And the idea that my smartphone would need more RAM than my desktop or my laptop really is quite ridiculous. Now we need to put in a couple of caveats here because I can see some of you already seething and you want to jump down to the comments and start writing something. Well, let's just put in a couple of caveats here. First of all, it does depend on which phone you are actually using. I have talked generically about four gigabytes and six gigabytes and eight gigabytes and the amount of available RAM. There are some OEMs who put some quite heavy-handed app killers in their uh, version of Android. So you switch the phone off, you put it to sleep, you leave it on the desk, and when you come back 30 minutes later, even though you've got all that available memory, they've been killed off. I know that in my Mate 8, for example, in the first few weeks that I had it, I certainly spent quite a lot of time going into the settings, and there's a whitelist where you can say, don't kill this app, and I actually had to go through putting in there the apps that I use most frequently because they were being killed off even though there was actually free RAM available. So some OEMs do mistakenly kill off apps in the background and then you switch to them and you only had them open like an hour ago and you haven't got that much uh, running and they've been killed off. And that can be a problem, but that's not to do with the amount of RAM you've got in your smartphone. That's purely the firmware that the OEM has put in there and they've configured it wrongly. And that's something you need to watch out for. And the second thing I'd like to say is that it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy a phone with let's say 10 gigabytes of RAM because maybe that phone is good for other reasons. So for example, if a really good smartphone came out now which has got the best camera and it's got the best display and it's got the best battery life and it's offering you know, the best online services, uh, then really the fact that it comes with 10 gigabytes, should, you shouldn't say, oh, I'm not gonna buy that because that's just stupid. If it's good for the other reasons, then just accept the 10 gigabytes what it is. But personally, I would like to see consumers boycotting devices with anything more than eight gigabytes in them because really it's unreasonable. And all it is is just a spec war between one OEM and another OEM. It raises the prices, reduces the quality because they're trying to squeeze in more stuff for less money and really isn't worth it. But if you do find a perfect phone that happens to have that amount of memory, well, they would just have to accept it. But really it's not necessary. Eight gigabytes max is all you're gonna need, certainly for 2019. I would gamble also for 2020. Really, this has to stop, this kind of battle between these companies just has to stop because it's not worth it and it's just stupid. And the final caveat to put in, of course, is it does depend on your usage, as I have mentioned. If you are just a person who uses kind of the standard apps that take 300, 400 megabytes, then you know, four gigabytes, six gigabytes, you may even better get away with three or two gigabytes in your use. It's gonna be absolutely fine if your device is well tuned. Other people who will do nothing but switch between uh, five different online games that each take up one gigabyte of memory and he wants to be kind of, or she wants to be switching between these, you know, they're playing Fortnite, then they're playing Need for Speed, then they're playing something else, then they're playing something. Well, okay, in that case, then you might need more memory. But kind of, if we come down to the medium space here of what 
you know, and it's a large, wide median space of what a lot of people do, those are extreme cases. Four, okay, you can live with it. Six to eight is the sweet spot. Anything more than eight is really uh, just too much, but your situation, of course, may be different. Okay, so there you have it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Android Authority. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel. Don't forget to go over to the Gary Explains YouTube channel to look at that video on how Android uh, memory management works. And of course, don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.